Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all doing well. Thank you so, so much for all of your birthday messages. It was my birthday yesterday on the 14th and I had such a lovely day. It was so relaxing, but also an apology because <laughs> on Saturday evening, just before my live chat premiere went live, Tim's, my, my partner's daughter and the babies decided to surprise me for my birthday, which was so, so nice. But they arrived about 20 minutes just before the live chat happened and I just felt so guilty and I kind of I came into the live chat just to say like oh guys I'm not going to be able to make it because family have just arrived with the grandbabies and yeah you guys are so supportive so thank you so much for anyone who stayed in the live chat when I wasn't there so I really appreciate you guys for just carrying on with the chat I still haven't read it back but I hope you all enjoyed that anyway but thank you for still being there when I wasn't there. Anyway, moving on with this video, we are going polyurethane technique in resin, one of the most beautiful results. But I mentioned a few videos back that I wanted to try it with just plain mica powder, not using chameleon at all. And that is what this video is all about, how to get the best out of your basic mica powder if you don't have the chameleon shades that I've been using a lot lately. And we're also going for that bubble free technique because we're using polyurethane and we're not using cling film. Some of you might know this as the cling film technique, but for me, it doesn't work. I hate cling film. It does not give me the results that I want. So we are going for beautiful bubble free results with my car. I hope you enjoy. So I am going to be using my Arteza mica powders. Now I have had these a solid three years when I first started resin. We are using polyurethane drop sheet. Now this is used by painters and decorators when they don't want to get paint on the floor. I got it from the pound shop. We're also using some starfish and we are not using the inlays. Because of the last results, I'm I'm still a bit like on the fence now as to whether to use the inlays with the polyurethane. So that is what we are doing. The mold I am using is the beautiful round tray mold from Molds and Shapes. Of course, their molds are beautiful. And before I poured my resin, I did use some sellotape to give it a really good clean to make sure there's no debris in there. Now the resin I'm using is Vista Turbo, purely because this is a fast curing resin. And I've spoken about this before. This resin is beautiful for coasters, flat pours, key rings, that kind of depth. But anything deeper than that, you will get a buildup of bubbles and it's really hard to get rid of them because Vista Turbo cures so, so fast. My first step is to put the starfish down in. Now, big thanks again to Kari, one of my patrons. She sent me some beautiful seashells and some starfish as well. And these all came as part of her bundle. But also Vivian sent me some as well. So I'm really, really grateful. And also Paula, another patron, who's also sent me some colours and some bits to use in all of my work. So honestly, massive appreciation for my patrons. You don't have to send me things to be a patron. It's just that they were you know getting rid of some stuff so i massively appreciate you guys i am adding some miniature seashells to those starfish now how you lay it out of course is up to you but i had in my head the vision of a beach so i had in my head the sand followed by the lighter shade of blue going all the way up to the darker shade of blue ocean very reminiscent of my resin work from last year. Now here is how we get a bubble free technique. This works with polyurethane drop sheet, not so much with cling film. Oh, hate cling film. Let the resin take the polyurethane. We are not touching it at this point. We are simply resting it over the resin and you can see here, the shot wasn't very clear for you, but you can see here how the resin is doing all of the work for the polyurethane sheet. It's drawing it in, which means the polyurethane is so tightly closed in on the resin, there's no air bubbles getting in. This is the best method I have found to get a bubble free result. Now, there is a risk that we're gonna put bubbles back into it because now it's time to play with the polyurethane. Everyone who knows the cling film technique will know that you either pinch it, poke it, prod it, kind of pull it around to get this dimpled, rippled effect. Whereas I didn't want to try that this time. My plan here, I don't want any texture at all. 
behind those starfish and those seashells. I want that plain, completely flat, completely plain as possible. And then the rest of it, I want layers, lines. So what I did there, you saw, I just pulled the polyurethane sheet each side to make these very, very straight across ridges. I'm not pinching, poking, prodding. And that is how we got these lines in. It was just something I was thinking of trying just to see. Now, there was a risk that some of that polyurethane would get trapped. It very nearly did, but it didn't. It came away like a dream, as you see. Now, I am using my standard, plain Arteza mica powders. There's nothing fancy about these mica powders. They are just standard mica powders. I'm trying. <laughs> I was a bit nervous. I didn't know how it would work, but I am trying with a beach sand coloured gold. I just eyeballed my colours and was like, what looks like sand, you know? And I'm just covering over the back of the starfish and those seashells. I'm not completely covering the starfish. I want some of that starfish to look as though it is coming out into the water. And I was just at this point hoping, <laughs> hoping that the vision I had in my head is what would we would have in, you know, in the final result. Now I'm using all of my different blues. So I picked up three, four blues that I thought would work for this gradient, this kind of ombre ocean effect. And I went in with really beautiful aqua color right by the shoreline, covering up the rest of that starfish, followed by the next shade of blue, followed by this beautiful teal, followed by a dark blue. Now you can see here, I'm piling on the mica powder. You don't need to do that. But my thought process was, if I put quite a lot of mica powder on, then I can blend all of the blues together. So there wouldn't be like a harsh line of mica colorant. You wouldn't see an exact line where the two colors meet. Very much like doing like a watercolor painting or trying to get an ombre design in your acrylic paint. I was really trying to get this desired effect by using the mica powders. And any minute now, any second now, you'll see me go in with the dark blue right at the very top, just to sig signal, symbolize, symbolize the deep, deep ocean. And yeah, some of the blues work better than some of the, you know, some of the blues work better together than that blue going in at the top, if I'm honest. So I could have probably chosen a better shade. However, the overall effect is still there. The impact is still there. This is where I have to be open and honest with you guys and tell you that I had another project that I was working on at the same time as this. And I had some leftover black resin made with the Vista Turbo, which we all know by now, doesn't have much work time. And I saw it smoking, it was smoking. And I knew at this point I had no time. It's a case of pour this black resin in here right now or lose the black resin. And that is why I kind of came in, I, I was at this point I was kind of in the background rushing around like there's smoke coming out. Right here on the screen, you can see the smoke. On the right hand corner, you can see that white smoke billowing out. Now this is not ideal. This is what's called the beginnings of an exothermic reaction. And at this point, I am grateful. I am grateful for my respirator. I'm grateful that I've got my windows open, my door is closed, my windows are open, I've got my respirator on, and I'm grateful that I'm using PPE because this is what people need to understand. When it comes to using epoxy resin, you know, there's such a, there's such a movement of people refusing, refusing to wear PPE. Like, you know, each to their own. But for me, PPE is so, so important, especially for moments like this human error when you leave a resin for too long and it starts to go exothermic and you see that smoke. That cannot be healthy, okay? That cannot be healthy. Okay, it's an absolute mess, but it worked. This is the next day demold. Are we ready? Oh my goodness me, I love it. I absolutely love it. It came out exactly as I wanted it to in my head. The different shades of those blues, turquoise, greens, aquas going all the way through to that dark blue at the top. The actual ombre worked a dream. 
that is because I was generous with my mica powder and I brushed it on for such a long time, hence the resin going exothermic. <laughs> I spent a lot of time blending those colors in together. How crystal clear is this? Not a bubble in sight, not a bubble in sight. And I particularly love the gold, that gold mica powder behind the starfish and the seashells was my favorite area. Now I couldn't just leave it here, it needed a little bit of something, something, it needed elevation. I needed to elevate it up. So I decided this is going to be a wall plaque, a beach art, you know, like if you're one of those lucky people that have a beach house, <laughs> hit me up, you can buy it. But yeah, I don't know anyone in the UK with a beach house. I don't think that's how we really live down here. But uh, yeah, absolutely love it. This beach life slogan from the cricket just brings it to life. And I could not be more happier. The edges, of course, are a little bit sharp. They're a little bit jagged. So I will finish this by sanding the back and actually adding a cork background, which I think will be really nice as well because it's very beachy. Cork is very beachy. But this is how we get our bubble free cling film stroke polyurethane technique. Now, honestly, I'm in love with it. The shine from it, the mold is beautiful everything just lent itself to this successful plaque apart from the black resin but it still worked guys it still worked i'm really really happy with the results let me know if you have tried your micas or if you plan to do this technique let me know if you use cling film and how you get on with it because me and cling film we don't speak to each other we're not friends <laughs> let me know your favorite element of this project look at this gold beach look at this gold beach like spec spectacular results. I'm so, so happy. I'm happy with the bubble free results. I'm happy with all of it. Really love it. And I hope you do too. Hope you found this really helpful as well. If you are thinking about trying this technique, let me know how you get on. Hashtag Claire made me do it. <laughs> I'm loving that hashtag still. People are using it. So I really appreciate you all. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.